How's it going YouTube and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about why you absolutely should re-gear your Jeep if you plan on running anything over a 33 inch tire. First step of this install process is to locate the evap canister. The yoke will take a little bit of gentle persuasion. So these tabs do not want to come off. Before we get started, I want to show you the difference between a Dana 30 and a Dana 44 ring and pinion gear. Now you're going to hear a lot of people say that the 44 is a lot stronger than the 30 and that is absolutely true. However, there is a lot of misconception as to why the 44 is stronger than the 30. Now I want to clarify that I'm only talking about factory stock axles that come on the Jeep. So I'm not gonna be talking about an aftermarket axle here. So the Dana 44 and the Dana 30 on the Jeeps, they both have the same axle tube thickness and the sea gussets are both gonna be the same. Jeep does this because it's a way for them to save money during the production of the vehicles and they're not gonna have to use different parts when they're making the axles. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the Dana 44 ring and pinion gear, and this is gonna be your Dana 30 ring and pinion gear. Now, if you compare the two, the Dana 30 and the Dana 44, you can see that there is a huge size difference. There's gonna be a lot more material, and that is where your strength of the axles is gonna come from. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the reason why you should re-gear your Jeep. For simplicity purposes, I'm only going to be talking about the JK model and newer. Uh, while this concept applies to all the vehicles out there, uh, there are just too many Jeep models and too many combinations to cover. And this video is going to end up being over an hour long if I do that. From the factory, stock tires on most of the newer Jeeps measure close to 32 inches in diameter. Depending on the package that you get, you will either have the basic 321 gears, the max tow package that gives you a 373 gear ratio, or the Rubicon where you can opt to have a 410 gear set. These gear ratios are designed to give you the best gas mileage possible, towing capability while still maintaining a decent gas mileage rating, and the 410 gear is gonna give you max torque and max crawling ability while you're out on the trail. So when you pair these gear ratios with the factory tire size or you go up to a 33 inch tire, these ratios aren't gonna be impacted too much and you're not gonna notice very much of a impact on the way that your Jeep drives on road or off road. When you increase the tire size, it requires more torque to spin that tire. This equates to a loss in performance, both in acceleration as well as off road crawling capability. This in turn puts a increased workload on the drivetrain. The engine has to work harder and if you have an automatic transmission, this will cause added stress on the torque converter. This will cause parts to wear out a lot faster and this equates to expensive repairs down the road. Gears are gonna act as a torque multiplier. So from the factory, your vehicle only produces so much torque. So from the engine, it goes into the transmission and the gears multiply the torque that's applied from the engine. So when the transmission sends power out to your axles, those axle ratios will actually multiply the torque more. So an easy, simple way for people to get back to as close of a factory setting as possible is to change out the gear ratios within your axles. The analogy that I like to use is comparing it to riding an 18-speed bike. Now, most of us have ridden a bike in the past or at some point in our lives, so it's easy for us to understand how changing gears on that bike will either increase the work that you have to do or reduce the work that you have to do. Now on everyday riding, you're able to work your way up in the gear set or work your way down as you're pedaling up a hill. So in this scenario, you are the engine powering the bike. Now imagine that while you're riding your bike, the gear shifter breaks and you're stuck in the highest gear possible. Uh, if you try to start pedaling from a stop, it's gonna require you to exert a lot more effort. Also imagine trying to pedal up a hill. If you're not able to downshift to make it easier on yourself, you're, you're gonna struggle. And this is exactly what happens to your Jeep whenever you change and go to a bigger tire size. So the big question is, do you absolutely have to re-gear? 
Well, no, you don't have to re-gear your Jeep and it's not just gonna magically burst into flames as soon as you start driving it. But over time, that added strain on the drivetrain is going to cause things to start breaking. You are also going to hear a lot of people say, well, I've been running 35s with the stock gears for over a year now with no issues. That may be true, but you also don't realize how much of a performance loss that you had whenever you upped your tire size. They really don't have anything to compare it to. Uh, so there's a saying, you don't know what you don't know. Once you re-gear your Jeep, it's pretty much a night and day difference in the way that it handles. And people who have done this are gonna tell you that uh, it's a night and day difference because they have something to compare it to. They know how the Jeep drove before they re-geared and they can compare it to how it's driving after they re-gear. So what gear ratio is right for you? Well, there are a lot of charts out there that list what gear ratios will get you back to stock-like performance. And I'll leave links to some of those charts in the description below. Now, even with that being said, it's not really a clear cut decision on what gear ratio you should get. A good rule of thumb is a 456 for 35s, 488 for 37s, and 513 and up for larger tires. Uh, these are a safe middle ground between drivability on the road as well as capability off-road. If you just want the look of a lifted Jeep with larger tires and it's your daily driver, then maybe you're gonna want something that will give you a little bit better gas mileage. On the other hand, if you're doing a lot of rock crawling or off-road use, then maybe you want more torque. So you're gonna wanna go with a lower gear set ratio. If you're somewhere in between, maybe it's your daily drive vehicle, but you do take it out on a trail every once in a while, then you're probably gonna want something in between, something that's gonna give you the ability to get a decent uh, gas mileage rating as well as maintain torque and the ability to use your low range crawling ability. Now keep in mind that re-gearing is also going to be a very expensive job and it's labor intensive. So this isn't something that you're going to want to be doing several times. You are going to want to know what tire size you ultimately want to end up with. And you're going to want to know what it is that you plan on doing with your Jeep. This will help you determine what gear ratio works best for you. One last thing to keep in mind is that when you go to a larger tire and re-gear, you're going to need to have your ECU reprogrammed. This will correct the speedometer as well as change the shift points if you have an automatic transmission. Hopefully you found this information helpful, and if you have any other questions that you would like to see discussed, then go ahead and leave a comment. Also, make sure to like this video as well as hit the subscribe button.